Indonesia uh, has the second longest coastline, so we are very vulnerable to the impact of climate change. That's why we have policies and action for mitigation for adaptation. The Republic of Indonesia is the world's largest archipelagic country, with marine areas covering around 74% of its nearly 8 million square kilometers of territory. The country comprises more than 17,000 islands, leaving it highly vulnerable to natural disasters. It also plays a vital role in addressing global climate change, given its extensive tropical rainforests, rich biodiversity, and marine ecosystems. Uh, in 2016, we have submitted our first NDC, and then 2020, we have updated NDC, and last year, we submitted our enhanced NDC. All those things uh, reflect the, our commitment to climate change. We developed some mechanisms and instruments for both adaptation and uh, mitigation. In our updated NDC, we have included our increased ambition on adaptation, where we include ocean. Indonesia has prioritized comprehensive land and ocean-based climate mitigation and adaptation efforts to build resilience in critical sectors such as food, water, and energy. And then for mitigation, we have a commitment to increase our ambition as reflected in our enhanced NDC. For Indonesia, adaptation is as important as mitigation. Indonesia's current NDC sets an unconditional emissions reduction target of 29%, and a conditional target of 41% compared to business-as-usual scenarios. Its NDC encompasses multiple sectors, including energy, waste, industrial processes, agriculture, forestry and other land uses, along with adaptation measures. Indonesia has also submitted a long-term strategy for low emission development and climate resilience, aiming to peak national greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and achieve net zero emissions no later than 2060. Since a couple of years ago, we have started to work closely with provinces and also cities, try to strengthen their climate action and how we could integrate it at national level. And also we work with private sector during our updated NDC. NDC partnership help us to disseminate information of our updated NDC to ministries at national level and to other stakeholders in sub-national levels. NDC partnership also has supported us in formulating our roadmap of NDCs. We have 29 target conditionally and then 41% conditionally, so we broke it down into two years target and for each sector and subsector activities and then based on this target, we could measure it annually. So this is the role of NDC Partnership to support us. Indonesia has been a member of the NDC Partnership since 2016, actively contributing to its governance by serving on the steering committee from 2022 to 2023. Throughout its engagement with the partnership, Indonesia has requested assistance in areas like policy design, mainstreaming its NDC into national planning, and strengthening MRV systems. We cannot do it our own, but we have to work with the others. For Indonesia, the role of NDC partnership in supporting countries is very important because the way of NDC partnership facilitating countries, it's a very inclusive process and it's a very supportive process. My expectation is that NDC partnership still support us, in particular developing countries, in strengthening our NDC implementation and also, of course, to raise our ambition.